Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Horsepower Obsessed. My name is Justin, and today we're gonna talk about the brand new C8 Stingray, all of the driving modes the car will have, and why it's a little different than the previous generation Corvette. All right, so we all know the C7 Corvette had its own driving modes and it would control things such as the exhaust sound, the steering wheel stiffness or feel, as well as the actual suspension. So you had your typical tour, sport, and track, as well as a couple different ones that helped with things like fuel mileage and specific styles of weather. But those ones weren't as important as the main three. Tour, sport, and track. Obviously, touring was the softest, the easiest to steer, and the throttle response was what you would expect out of a touring style car. Now, when you bump that up to sport, everything stiffened up a little bit. The suspension stiffened up, the steering wheel got a little stiffer and a little more tactile, and the way the accelerator responded was a little bit more instantaneous. Now, one more up into track, and you were that much better. The steering was even stiffer, the suspension was even stiffer, and it really just stiffened everything up so the car would have minimal body roll, would be in the fastest possible configuration for actual track use. Now, fast forward to 2019, we get the reveal of the C8 Stingray Corvette, and it has the same kind of system, but there's differences. And the biggest one is the braking system. So now alongside the typical changes that go with tour, track, and sport, now we're also getting a change to the actual braking system. In tour, you're still gonna have the smoother suspension, the lighter weight steering wheel, and an accelerator pedal that is a little more laid back, so to speak. And the rest of them would progress just like it did in the C7 Corvette, but now we also have the brake systems controlled by that. So in the sport mode and track mode, the brakes are gonna work differently than they do in tour mode. And this is because of a new unique braking system that's brought to us by Brembo, and it's actually electronically controlled. So instead of being controlled specifically through hydraulics, now it's electronically assisted. And because of that, we have the ability to adjust how hard you have to push the brake or how easy you have to push the brake to actually get it to come to a stop. So obviously on a track or in some sort of performance driving, you are gonna want those brakes to be as touchy as possible and make sure that when you hit them, they actually stop you. Versus if you're driving around just Sunday driving in touring mode, they don't have to be quite as touchy. They don't have to grip quite as hard. Now this is pretty cool. I always thought that the idea of changing through those modes was something that was pretty interesting, but now we're getting to the point where many, many, many variables of the car are changed throughout those different modes, and it's pretty interesting. It basically builds a car that can really be used for daily driving or track use all in the same package. Now, Chevrolet has actually kind of given a definition to what the brake pedal is really going to do in these different modes, and they actually have it listed as, quote, Tor provides a comfortable brake feel for everyday driving, Sport provides drivers with an option for more jump in and more aggressive feel, and then Track provides a smooth and progressive feel at the limit that allows drivers a wide range of modulation for trail braking. That's really just a fancy way of saying braking gets better as you go through the mode. So basically, like I said, Tour is gonna be your Sunday driving stuff, Sport's gonna be in between, and Track is gonna give you the best track braking experience. Now this new system Chevy's calling the E-Boost Brakes, and it's basically just a fancy way of saying that it's brake by wire, which isn't completely brand new. It's not something that the Corvette is doing that no one's ever done before. This kind of technology is used widely in hybrid style cars because a lot of them don't necessarily have the engine to provide the vacuum for those brakes, so they go with something more electronic, like in this case. Now again, this is really cool. It's really awesome to build around a car that can literally do everything in one package. But what this tells me is that GM's really setting up the future of this car because there are a lot of rumors out there suggesting that one of the models of the upcoming C8 Corvette is gonna be a hybrid of some kind. And if it gets to the point where it's almost completely electric or even to the point where it would actually shut off the gasoline powered engine, 
then you would need brakes that can operate electronically like this because there won't be a vacuum created by the engine anymore. So the whole process with the Corvette that GM has going on really seems like they're trying to make this car something you can daily drive, but at the same time take to the track and have a great experience doing it, but they're future-proofing it. So whenever the new models come out and they decide to move to hybrid or possibly even a full electric style car, the groundwork's already laid. The electric brakes are already available and they've already been tested. So like I said, switching through all the available modes, it's gonna control the steering wheel stiffness, the braking feel, the exhaust note, and the actual suspension stiffness. Now, another thing that changes would be the actual digital dash display. And we have seen the three different modes already throughout some of GM's promotional videos. And I'll put that picture up here on the screen now. So it's very likely that the top one is tour, the middle one is sport, and the bottom one is track. Really the only reason I think that is because the bottom one looks very similar to the track setup on the current C7 Corvette, where it gives you a much bigger readout for the RPM range. It also gives you pretty largely on the screen there what your temperatures are and what your tire pressures are set at. So all of that stuff is readily available for you on the track, as well as a G meter over on the right hand side. Now odds are good on the tour and the sport mode here. You could probably change the information that's on the right and left hand side of the RPM gauge there, just like you can in the C7. The pocket gauges are easily adjustable, but it's really neat looking. I think the sport mode one looks awesome because having that lit up red like that is really a cool looking thing as far as I'm concerned. I think the track display looks a little too bare, maybe a little too plain, but at the same time, it's fully functional and it would definitely give you easy access to all the information you need on the track. If we look at the bottom of these individual displays, you can see on the top one that I thought was Tor has a little road. On the middle one that is sport. I can't tell exactly what that icon is, but it looks like there's a speedometer in the background of it. And then the bottom one, it's a track symbol. So odds are very good that is tour, sport, and track. And it's definitely interesting. Like I said, these are no doubt customizable, but they're pretty cool looking. And in the video where they actually show these things being changed, it looks like they respond really quickly, which is definitely going to be thanks to that new digital architecture that they're using. Now, lastly, guys, I want to talk about one more piece of information that I came across, and that was actually the high-rise spoiler for the car and how it attaches to the car. Now, for any of you who aren't familiar with the C7 ZR1, the rear spoiler is obviously very massive in the ZTK setup, but it bolts directly onto the back bumper, which makes it pretty easy to remove and to add on, but the brackets that you're actually bolting those to run down through the rear bumper and actually bolt into the frame of the car. Now with the C8, it looks like the high-rise spoiler is gonna do something very similar because you cannot add or remove that spoiler without completely removing the rear fascia. This was an article I actually came across on the midenginecorvetteforum.com and they were specifically talking about the high-rise spoiler if you decide to take delivery at the National Corvette Museum. They basically found that the 2020 Corvette order guide shows that the high wing spoiler is available in carbon flash metallic, all colors for the actual Corvette, as well as visible carbon fiber, but they carry a code that says it's not available with the Corvette Museum delivery. So they actually reached out and talked to somebody there and asked why this was, and they said it was not available because during the actual PDI or pre-delivery inspection from the dealership, that's when they would be putting on the actual high rise spoiler. Now, for some reason, they don't trust the National Corvette Museum or train them or whatever it may be to do this. So they say, if you're getting it shipped to the National Corvette Museum, you cannot have that high rise spoiler. This is something that could change in the future since none of these options are locked down or set in stone just yet. But for right now, they're showing that that option cannot be ordered together because of the fact that, that rear bumper has to be removed for installation. Not that that's a huge deal, but it is definitely interesting with the information for the car coming out at a kind of a slow rate at this point. All of these little bits are definitely interesting to hear. And it's something to consider if you wanted to have that ship to the National Corvette Museum. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. If you liked what you saw, give me a big thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, shoot them in the comment section down below or email me at horse.power.obsessed at gmail.com. I'm always happy to hear from you guys. If you have not subscribed yet, please do. I have plenty of C8 content coming and I would like to be able to share it with as many people as I possibly can. 
And as always, guys, I'll catch you in the next upload. Thank you.